welcome back. So what we're going to cover today will be understanding 12 leads part two. We're going to talk about the high lateral MI today. So if you look at the upper EKG on the left, that actually is a great example of a high lateral MI. You can see some elevation in lead one. You can see elevation in AVL and of course reciprocal depression in two, three and AVF. If you'll take a look at the purple section of the heart, that is where the blockage would be most of the time. It would be a blockage of the left circumflex artery that produces the high lateral MI, as, as is in common parlance, okay? Just re-looking, again, this is what ST segment elevation looks like for the people that are kind of new to this. I won't stay on this long, but feel free to pause it and just kind of go through these photos at your leisure, at your own speed, to begin to be able to identify that. Remember that the criteria for all STEMIs, wherever you are, is going to be ST segment elevation in two or more contiguous leads. So that's just something to keep in mind. I know some places have policies that are a bit different, but that is the standard of care. Let's look at it that way. So since different STEMIs present with different problems, we're going to cover the lateral MI today. Just because it's a STEMI doesn't mean everything is the same. So... Where do we see elevation? One, AVL, V5, and V6 are considered the lateral leads. One and AVL being the high lateral leads in common parlance, and then V5 and V6 being considered to be the low lateral leads. The two biggest things that they will present with is cardiogenic shock in late stages and, of course, hypotension. Let's talk about why. So let's go back to the geography here. If you look at the purple section of the heart, if the left circumflex artery is blocked, what is being perfused on that side of the heart, right? That is pretty much the entirety of the left atrium and the left ventricle. Maybe not the entirety. That was probably a poor choice of words. But it's enough of it that you're not going to get good contraction with a major blockage. If we don't get good contraction, then the patient's almost preload dependent on the left-hand side, right? That being the case, what's going to happen is that ventricle is not going to properly empty. If it can't properly empty because it can't properly perfuse itself, you're not going to have great blood pressure, okay? Not without some sort of help. Nitrate therapy is absolutely indicated. Something that is not out of the realm of possibility to see in these patients is tachycardia, even if they're on beta blockers. If the heart can't maintain pressure, it will shift to rate, right? If it, if it cannot increase dromotropy or inotropy, it will increase chronotropy. That's just the way it goes. So the biggest things we would see with these patients would be hypotension, tachycardia, and eventually cardiogenic shock. These are the things you have to be prepared for. Let's just have a look at another EKG to get a little practice in. So looking at leads one and AVL, feel free to pause this if you want. You can see the ST segment elevation, reciprocal depression in two, three, and AVF. And then we see a considerable amount of elevation in the precordial leads as well. Now this matters for the reason that I'm about to kind of go through with you here. Remember that there are only two pipes that stem from the aorta that make up the three major coronary arteries. The one that splits off on the left-hand side, okay, the one that comes out of the left side of the aorta, splits into two different coronary vessels, the left anterior descending and the left circumflex. When you see massive areas of infarct like this, you can kind of think of the, the anterior part of the heart and the, the lateral part of the heart being completely ischemic, all right, and actively getting injured, if there's ST segment elevation, there may be a very proximal blockage. So that pipe, before it splits into the LAD and the left circumflex, that artery is called the left main coronary artery. It is not out of the realm of possibility to have a blockage there. It happens, all right? Very often it happens and we don't get a chance to catch it on the EKG because these patients go from bad to worse fairly quickly. So keep that in mind. Let's have a look at another EKG. So one in AVL, this is a very obvious high lateral STEMI. It looks like high lateral involvement's the, the biggest part of the story here. We definitely have reciprocal depression in three and AVF, not as much in two. So again, going back to the geography, just to lock it in, this is probably a blockage of the left circumflex artery. Now remember that there's not always a guarantee. There's always an outlier. There's always someone with a different problem Things aren't always as they seem, but the vast majority of the time, if you have a high lateral MI, you've got a blocked left circumflex artery. The, the one MI that gets really squirrely is the inferior MI because all cardiac vessels terminate in the inferior wall. So technically, and in reality, 
You can have an inferior wall MI from any of the three vessels, but the high lateral generally belongs to the left circumflex and there's not a lot of margin for error for that one. All right, comment, like, subscribe. If you're interested in live lectures, comment me at shadetreecardiology at gmail.com and get out there and practice.